Debunking the chromosome 2 claim Some evolution believers claim that two chromosomes from an alleged chimp human ancestor merged, fused together, to form human chromosome 2. And allegedly, this is proof of naturalistic evolution, by random chance and natural selection, of humans from a chimp human ancestor. However, this claim does not hold up to rational investigation. Reasons to reject the merger or fusion hypothesis. 1. The core logic of naturalistic evolution is false, i.e., similarity is claimed to be proof of common descent without intelligent design. Genetic convergent evolution falsifies that core logic. The fusion hypothesis invokes exactly the same logic as mentioned above. So the logic of the fusion hypothesis is false. 2. Genetic similarity can arise from convergent evolution. It can also arise from common functionality. So, similarity does not prove naturalistic evolution from a common ancestor. 3. Consider an alleged ape-like human ancestor with 48 chromosomes. To reduce this to 46 chromosomes, a 48-chromosome parent must have had a viable and fertile 46-chromosome child. This would be a low probability event. 4. So now you have one child with 46 chromosomes in a species, all of whose members have 48 chromosomes. Who does that child mate with? It has to mate with a 48-chromosome individual of the same species. When mammals with different chromosome numbers, e.g. horse and donkey mate, they cannot create reproductively fit fertile offspring. In the case of horse and donkey, the offspring is a mule, which cannot reproduce. So, the 46-chromosome human ancestor child would have no fertile, reproductively fit offspring from mating with a 48-chromosome individual of that species. And as a result, the alleged line of descent to humans would terminate. So, the fusion event would not work to create the human lineage. 5. If the 46-chromosome child was able to reproduce, it would have reduced reproductive fitness due to chromosome-related reproductive incompatibility, and so the mutant offspring would be swamped by the parental species and would die off as a lineage. 6. In addition, if, somehow, this 46-chromosome individual were to reproduce, we now have a very severe bottleneck in the human lineage. The genetic bottleneck would be constrained to one or two individuals. Such a small bottleneck would result in extinction by genetic drift and inbreeding effects. This is evidence against the fusion hypothesis. 7. In addition, such a small population would not be able to generate the number of mutations needed to create all of the biofunctional information required to create humans from the alleged chimp human ancestor. So, this falsifies the fusion hypothesis. Genetic evidence against the fusion hypothesis. 1. Chromosomes have telomeres at their ends comprising a specific DNA sequence, TTAGG, repeated multiple times. Human telomeres typically range from 5,000 to 15,000 bases in length. In 1991, researchers found what they thought was a telomere-telomere fusion in human chromosome 2. However, this sequence was only about 800 bases long, much shorter than the 10,000 or more bases expected, for a fusion of two 5,000 to 15,000 base telomeres. 2. Moreover, this sequence showed only 70% similarity to a pristine fusion sequence, conflicting with known mutation rates and human DNA variability. 3. It also lacked satellite DNA, which would be expected if this was a fusion event. 4. In addition, the alleged telomeric fusion site is gene-rich, whereas telomeres, at the ends of chromosomes, don't contain genes. 5. Syntony, similar gene order, with the chimp genome, would be expected at the fusion site if the fusion hypothesis is true. However, the alleged fusion site lacks syntony with the chimp genome. 6. A critical issue is that the alleged fusion sequence is in the middle of a functional gene. The sequence serves as a promoter within the highly expressed ddx wavanel 2 gene, which is corregulated with many other genes and produces long non-coding RNAs in 255 different human tissues and cell types. This means that the coding sequence is a promoter for a functioning gene that is highly integrated into gene regulatory circuits. 7. Recent studies show that the claimed fusion-like sequence binds to transcription factors, including RNA polymerase II, indicating its role as a promoter located inside the gene. 8. The sequence also initiates transcription, highlighting its function within the gene. 9. Furthermore, the ddx wavanel 2 gene and the fusion-like sequence are encoded on the minus DNA strand, producing RNA transcripts of varying lengths. Parts of the fusion-like sequence resemble other genomic regions, including regions that are not near telomeres. This indicates multiple functions beyond telomere-like roles. 10. The merger hypothesis also claims that there is a 
cryptic centromere from chromosomal fusion that resulted in two centromeres. However, the alleged cryptic centromere's alphoid DNA differs from that in functional human centromeres and shows no similarity to the chimp genome. Conclusion The evidence falsifies the chromosome 2 fusion narrative and indicates that the so-called fusion sequence is an essential gene component, not an evolutionary remnant. So, another evolutionary claim fails upon closer investigation. The bottom line is that there is no claimed evidence for naturalistic mega-evolution that can stand up to close investigation. The evidence supports microevolution, but falsifies naturalistic mega-evolution, the claim of naturalistic single cell to human evolution. Thanks to Dr. Jeffrey Tompkins, PhD in genetics, for some of the concepts discussed here. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.